So far, we discussed many different types of reactions that deal with the carbonyl group. So we examined how alcohols can react with carbonyl groups to basically form hemiacetals and acetals. We also discussed how amines can react with the carbonyl group to basically form amines and anamines. Now we're going to talk about another reaction that is very important in organic chemistry that basically allows us to produce alkenes from carbonyl groups. This is known as the Wittig reaction. So the Wittig reaction gives us a way to basically transform the carbon-oxygen double bond into our carbon-carbon double bond. It gives us a way to transform our carbonyl groups into alkenes. So the general form of this equation looks something like this. So we begin with our carbonyl group so we can have formaldehyde, aldehyde or a ketone. We undergo the Wittig reaction and we basically transform the carbonyl group into this alkene. So we replace the carbon-oxygen double bond with the carbon-carbon double bond. Now, this is not very interesting. What's interesting is what exactly is the reaction mechanism by which our carbon-oxygen double bond transforms into the carbon-carbon double bond. The first step of this reaction is to basically form something called the phosphorus elid or simply the elid. The phosphorus elid is a nucleophile that reacts with this molecule to eventually form this alkene here. So first, let's discuss how we can actually go about forming this phosphorus elid, the nucleophile that reacts in the Wittig reaction. So, in the first step, in the formation of our elid, we basically take triphenylphosphine and react it with our methyl halide, in this case the methyl uh, iodide. So the methyl iodide contains this good leaving group and so because our triphenylphosphine contains the phosphorus that uh, has a lone pair of electrons, this acts as a good nucleophile. And so in an SN2 fashion, this phosphorus forms a bond with the carbon, kicking off this bond between carbon and iodide, breaking this bond and kicking off our iodide. So the first step in the formation of the phosphorus elid, we basically undergo an SN2 reaction and we form the phosphonium ion as well as this iodide. Now, what's so special about this phosphonium ion? Well, the phosphonium ion contains acidic hydrogens. This carbon contains H atoms that can be uh, taken off by a Lewis base. So this acts as a good Lewis acid, and if we react it with a strong Lewis base, we produce the phosphorus uh, elide, or simply the elide. So let's take this phosphonium ion and let's react it with a strong Lewis base. So very commonly, the strong Lewis base that we use is butyl lithium. So we can use any type of organolithium, but usually this R group is our butyl group. So basically we have the R attached to our lithium and because this is a very polar bond, because we have an electropositive lithium and electronegative carbon on this R group, we have another resonant form that can basically exist on which we have the two electrons and the carbon and a positive charge on the lithium. So once again, this is because our lithium is not very electronegative. And so this can act as a strong Lewis base and react with this phosphonium ion, our Lewis acid. So one of these H's can be taken away by our molecule here and these, this bond is broken off and we place the two electrons onto the carbon. So uh, our product in this case is our elide, our phosphorus elide that contains a positive charge on the phosphorus and a negative charge on the carbon because it has those two electrons. Now because carbon has too many electrons and the phosphorus has too little electrons, we form a double bond in the second resonance structure. 
So this is resonance stabilized and we see that because of this, the elide is formed because this molecule is stable as a result of this resonance stabilization. Now we also form the hydrocarbon. So if this R group is, for example, a butyl group, we form the butane molecule when this grabs and takes away our H. So this is the nucleophile that we need to react with this carbonyl group to basically form this alkene here. So what exactly is the reaction mechanism? Well, let's take this molecule and let's examine it for just a moment. Why is it a strong Lewis? Why is it a strong nucleophile in the first place? Well, it contains a carbon that has a lone pair of electrons in the same way that our phosphorus phosphorus or nitrogen contains a lone pair of electrons and can act as a nucleophile, this too can act as a good nucleophile. And when it is mixed in with our carbonyl group, this nucleophile, the carbon, uses its lone pair of electrons to attack this carbon, displacing the pi bond and placing it onto this oxygen. So the third step is the following step and we form the following molecule. So this carbon contains our two H atoms, this carbon contains the two R groups, and this is the oxygen that now bears a negative charge. So we have an oxygen that has too many electrons, a phosphorus that is electron deficient, and because they are found in close proximity, we have electrostatic attraction between these opposite charges, and so we form a bond between the oxygen and the phosphorus, and we form this four-membered ring. Now, this four-membered ring is very unstable because there is a lot of strain in this angle inside this four-membered structure. And so very quickly, it will basically deteriorate, it will break down to form the final two products. Now, what actually happens is this bond breaks off to form a pi bond between the phosphorus and the oxygen to form this thermodynamically very stable molecule we call triphenylphosphine oxide. So this molecule is resonance stabilized as a result of the phenyl groups that are attached to our phosphorus and so this is very thermodynamically stable. We also also form this alkene. So this double or this bond breaks off and forms the pi bond between these carbons to form our alkene. So we see that this entire reaction is driven as a result of the thermodynamic stability of these two molecules. These are very stable. Now, one particular example of the Wittig reaction is the following reaction in which we can use the Wittig mechanism to basically transform cyclopentanone into methylene cyclopentane. So before this Wittig reaction, we really had no way of forming this product without some other product interfering. But in this case, we can use the Wittig reaction to basically form only one product, this product here in which we replace this oxygen-carbon double bond with a carbon-carbon double bond. So once again, the Wittig reaction is a reaction between a nucleophile called phosphorus elide and our carbonyl group. And it basically allows us to replace the carbon-oxygen double bond of the carbonyl group with this carbon-carbon double bond. So these first two steps basically involve the formation of the phosphorus elide, which then acts as a nucleophile reacting with the carbonyl to form this very unstable four-member ring and eventually breaks down and forms these two thermodynamically stable products. So this is the Wittig reaction.